hi to Morton, both of you. How are you? Fine, thanks, good, Fraser. Good, good. Morton, are you with us? Oh, yes. And Fantastic. I too. Thank you very good, much. Good, good. Now, listen, you two gentlemen provided us with a lot of entertainment and a lot of really valuable content this morning. We had a lot of good, positive feedback on both of you. So, uh, big thumbs up to you. Let me just kick off. Steve, first question. Um, you and I obviously recorded that session a couple of weeks ago and yep. things have changed a little bit and uh, you're you know you're very much at the, the kind of coal face what's been happening in the last week or so specifically in the segments that you were looking at and that's a good question and, and and anyone who's listening thanks a lot because I've, I've already had loads of people contact me via linkedin asking me can they have the presentation and ask me specific questions so thanks a lot and please keep them coming because you know like fraser said i'm i'm, I'm here to to help and, and and if i can give any any feedback um, one thing we have noticed is um i've been sort of like looking out at some of the big uh, uh, some of the big printers around uh, the not just uk but around the world people started off two or three weeks ago furloughing staff um, mm. they were on sort of like very very reduced um, hours um, and I'm, what I am seeing and I'm, what I'm really glad to sort of like report back is some of the, the people like uh, uh, Hollywood Monster who, who were very open about you know and, and were devastated and having to sort of like put staff off are now working double shifts Brilliant. And they're, 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 they're waiting uh, on a backlog of two and a half million floor graphic orders, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in quantities that they've got to get in and out the door. So for the print industry and the people that I'm talking to, it's great news that all of a sudden the reopening, you know, of retail is creating a huge demand for for reopening packs, for signage, um, for, for all the sort of directional stuff and social distancing messages. So that's good news. I think the print industry is waking back up. There will be certain sectors which are still going to be under a little bit of stress and pressure, but those people I'm speaking to, it's, it's pretty good that's news. Good. That's good news. And, and Morton, obviously, you're in Denmark, so give us a bit of a flavour of, of what's happening on mainland Europe. I can't talk for mainland Europe, but I can talk for Denmark at least. All right, and, sorry, uh, Denmark. <laughs> then, yeah, we we see we see it all as one big group of people. You know, <laughs> yeah, I think we are just the appendix to Europe. To to put yeah, that of course, your appendix. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and a very small one as well. Uh, yeah, things are actually pretty good here. First of all, we were not hard hit so hard by the the pandemic, uh, which is mm -hmm. uh, of course great. Another thing is like uh, the schools for the small kids started almost four weeks ago, and for the big kids three weeks ago, and. Uh, we had a huge milestone last Monday because the bars and restaurants and nightclubs could open again. So now we're only missing the football uh, stadiums yeah. to open totally off, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, so so the, the bars and restaurants are opening. I guess there's like so now we can be, be pissed all the time. That's that's <laughs> yeah, of you know, course, that's of course, yeah. of course. <laughs> you will. I guess there'll be social distancing. But as as Steve pointed to, the print industry obviously has an opportunity here because there is going to be a lot of signage about just you know social distancing about a certain amount of meters between each other about you know go here go there exactly as steve said in his presentation he pointed to things like you know welcome back business we're, we're open for business so are you seeing that do you sense that the print industry is going to pick back up yeah I'm, to be honest phrase it's a, it's a bit of a uh, it's not a, it's not a stupid question in a way it's more like uh, to be honest, uh, since we started Inkish and we have tried to focus on on more like a global uh, play, I don't know really so much about the details in Denmark. To okay. be honest, okay, no, but no but but I want to share one thing that is important yeah. to me at least, and I hope that's okay, because uh, uh, two days ago we announced a hashtag Thank a Printer, which is a film appreciating uh, all the people that uh, restlessly have been uh, producing. Uh, uh, all the materials that we're referring to during the pandemic. So uh, I think we got more than 30,000 views and more than 500 shares just in two days. So so please yeah, sure, go and see that film and just make sure that it gets out so, because so that is, is to benefit that? the industry. Yeah, I was going to say, so what's the principle behind that? That basically, you know, there's a, there's a kind of a campaign to, to say thank you to printers for everything they've done. It's uh, basically an idea that Deborah Korn from the US came up with, uh, where she wrote a very, very touching uh, uh, narrative uh, where we are putting like a lot of photos because I mean, basically in America, they have like uh, often they appreciate and, and say thank you to 
truck drivers and to people sure. working in the stores. And, and, and what we wanted to do with this one was basically that I think a lot of people don't really understand that, that the, the printers as an essential industry has delivered a lot of the protection and a lot of the information, yeah, a lot right. of the communication that has been really, really important in this, during this pandemic. So we, we did this film, um, I think it's a very, very well done film, not just because we did it, but because the narrative, because of the photos, because, yeah, because of the, it's powerful, because, because it's, it's very, powerful very powerful. Yeah. Sure. And, and this is, I think it's an opportunity for the industry to tell a story uh, to the people that don't, that are not in the industry, because I don't think a lot of people yeah. understand how valuable we have been in, in the pandemic yeah, no, for, that's a really good for, point. for other people. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, do you sense that actually the print industry, you know, we've talked a lot about this and sort of slightly down on itself in a way, aren't we? We're slightly down on it, but you know, the, the, the numbers that Brendan was just sharing, they certainly at the beginning of the crisis, we were a bit, you know, down in the dumps. Do you think there's a sense that we need to, you know, lift their, lift their spirits some way? So was, was that aimed at me, uh, Fraser? Yeah, yeah, Steve. Sorry, I just wondered whether I'm. You... I'm sorry. Yes, I do. I do. And do you know what? I think. I think the. If you said there was sort of like the cloud of depression, I can absolutely understand it. I can. I can see from people's presses that were were stopping. Uh, forward orders uh, uh, drying up. Uh, marketing budgets being. Yep. Being temporarily suspended. You know, if I was one of those, uh, you know, uh, 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 business owners who had got a lot tied up in businesses and premises and equipment, I would have been absolutely worried sick and not sleeping at night. However, you know, I think the print industry is well positioned. I think they've got some great technologies out there. I think when it comes to things like mass personalization of print, you know, to get messages out there, I think the ability now to print onto a wide variety of substrates is always a massive help. Um, because you know, people who are opening up don't always know what they need. And I think this is where the print industry can now give their expertise. We're already hearing things about people using antibacterial coatings um, mm -hmm. on print in li liquid laminate or liquid form. Um, we're hearing that now people are sort of like putting antibacterial things into plastic. So, you know, things, you know, won't be, you know, so scary for people to touch. Um, and I think this is really where the print industry also can, can lead you know, and advise and, and to be uh, experts back to the brands and to the retailers and to the agencies. You know, all those three there I've just mentioned there need help. They, yeah. they, they don't know about substrates. They don't know about printing techniques. So I think that's, I think it's a real opportunity to, to go, for us to go back or the industry to go back to those, you know, wider channels and, and, and offer real experience because with all respect, all the people I've met, and, and in Indicia worldwide, we have about 2,500 print suppliers on our books worldwide, and they are experts, yeah. you know, and we sometimes forget that people just go, oh, I'll just get it printed, or, or I'll just speak to the printer, and I think sometimes we sort of lose that connection that actually the printer is the expert, they know how the ink goes down, they know how the substrate works, they know you know, how it's going to look in market. And, and looking at now how the, the, you were discussing just before I came on about furloughing and the pressure that puts on businesses because they've got less staff. You know, we are really, really busy at the moment uh, in DCA Worldwide talking to our clients because their teams have been furloughed, which means they've got less experience and less people inside their businesses. Well, actually means they're busier they're probably yep. more stressed because they're having to put marketing messages out there. So I think this is a great opportunity for us to really, really, really position the print industry now as, as where they have been for a long, long time, but maybe have been pushed back as ex expert, you know, knowledge resources on, on how we can support those brands and retail in the world. Yeah, that's, it's interesting what you said there. And I think that's really valid for, for the marketplace as a whole is, um, we are all learning you know we're doing a virtual summit and we're learning about technology and and i guess the print industry is in the same sort of space it's having to look at learning things just like everyone is um yesterday we were talking quite a bit about the kind of the debate between investment in the future and whether that investment goes to machines or whether it goes to people and there's a sense that some people are saying well, look we've just got to invest in in knowledge and technology, you know, and kind of people as much as we think about machines. Do you sense, do you sense that or? 
Yeah, yeah I, 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 I do because, you know, um, and, I'm, and, and I'm not aiming this at any one of our clients, but, you know, one thing we have seen is, is the rise of the intern, you know, in, in, inside large uh, uh, companies. And, and what that is, that sometimes can be a challenge, but it also can be an opportunity. The challenge is sometimes we go and speak to, to, to different people and, and, and maybe a, a marketing intern who is extremely intelligent, who've come out of, of maybe uni and it's their first position, they don't even know what a spot varnish is. Mm. You know, so it, we, we find that as part of the education and, and the opportunity there is to, to then be part of that process to say, this is how you do things and we can help you with your knowledge and we can build that knowledge up. So it, it's sort of a double-edged sword. So to answer your question, do you invest in people or technology? unfortunately the answer to that is is both because yeah. but it's a balance and 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 are we going to have future disruption you know in 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 the world it, you know i'm not saying there's going to be a, a secondary spike because I, i'm not uh, in any way uh, um knowledgeable in that but i think we might feel that there might be disruptions in the future i think we just have to maybe look at the way we can maybe switch things on and off at short periods of time or may, maybe future proof ourselves. Yeah. Take the learnings from this first piece, take the learnings from Asia where they've now opened up and, and maybe then start to think to ourselves, what if that happened again in six months or six years time? What could I learn from it? So on that basis, if you're investing in technology, so we'll, we'll keep you keep resources and people to separate. But if you are investing in technology, do you sense that this is going to be less about big bits of kit, and more about software or, uh, you know, automation or kind of, you know, things that help us to be more efficient and also to restrict, you know, so we haven't got such long supply chains that we're able to respond quickly rather than having to wait. Do you sense there's certain things that we should be looking at? Yeah, I, I think you, you've, you've hit the nail on the head there. I think we have to be more flexible. Technology is always going to be an enabler, you know, and what, we're, and what we are seeing is, is decisions that we're going to be taking years to make, maybe moving towards omni-channel or online, are now taking months. Things that we're going to be taking months are now taking weeks, and things that we're taking weeks are taking days. So, you know, this pandemic has acted as, as an accelerant, really, for, for some decisions. One thing I would say is based upon some of the requirements and some of the pressures that, that maybe the brands and retailers we've seen have, have been pushed back onto some of the print partners that we have is maybe the technology you invest in, in the future is uh, uh, multi, sort, sort of like more uh, uh, multifunctional. Uh, maybe you just don't put all your money in, you know, let's gonna say this, you know, catalog printing, you know, yeah. you know maybe what you have to do is, is, is have a more, f uh, you know, uh, equipment that is that can do flexible flexible print you know rigid materials you might have to print onto acrylic you know look at the spike we've all of a sudden had in acrylic in the world with visors and, and dividers mm -hmm. and things like that so i would say that i would say companies that have got machines uh, uh, a technology print technology that can print on a wider variety of materials i think they're the ones that can maybe spot a niche very quickly Yep. So their best um, post, their, their best place to respond is, is in essence what we're saying. There you go. Because yeah. we, don't, we don't know the next trend in opening supermarkets or bars or restaurants and cafes is, let's say, for instance, a flexible screen that has to go in between, you know, a diners. Well, if that's, if that's the case, well, you better make sure your print, your, your print device can print onto flexible plastics. Sure, you know, sure. or roll to, or roll to roll or rigid. So that's the only thing for me is, is if I was in a position now where I was thinking, what do I invest in? I would have to look at the equipment out there and go, it needs to print onto a wide variety of substrates, flexible and rigid. That's interesting. Um, Morton, did you want to add anything to that comment? Do you want to add anything to that in terms of kind of, you know, the thinking about the way that businesses need to adopt a different approach to their investment going forward? The thing is that that uh, you always invest in uh, in the, in what the market needs, right? Yeah, of course. The problem is that when market changes rapidly, then it's difficult to uh, be ready for it. I think that even even if uh, everybody contacts Steve today to ask for some equipment, I guess that you will have limitations of what you can deliver uh, on a very short term, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
so so uh, as everybody knows, predicting the future is uh, one of the hardest things, right? So so um, I would say that that uh, there is like a short term thing, and then it's a long term. I think that some of the interviews we did in in uh, in the past weeks have been more about how the market will look afterwards, and may, maybe the pandemic will will push forward uh, the uh, uh, faster growth in digital. Yeah. So what did you, did you, in your interviews, what were you getting from the, the conversations you had? What were the kind of typical approaches? Um, I got a lot of responses that there will be different, uh, different business after the COVID-19, obviously. I think uh, one of the best answers I got was from uh, Hamilton Costa from Brazil, because he said that everybody who's talking about uh, the, uh, the change due to the COVID-19 misses the very important point. And the very important point, in his opinion, was or is um, basically that the COVID-19 itself doesn't change uh, a lot of things in the market, but it unfortunately kickstarts the recession. Yeah. And in the recession, you will see lower demand on existing technology, but you will also see a, a growth in intellect, trying to invent things that can capture the market that might be there. And that is what basically will kickstart uh, the anti-recession afterwards. Right? Yeah, yeah. In essence, that's what Steve was saying. That's what we've, we've been saying, isn't it? This sort of sense that innovation will drive us through this. Yes. Um, that will help us get through it. And, and there, sorry, go on, Steve. Yeah. I was going to say, that, and Morton, you make a good point now, because one thing we saw, the, I saw a report the other day, which I th thought was fascinating, was um, in the last recession, sort of like in, uh, I think it was around 2007, um, actually there were some businesses that were, that were created at the back end of the recession about joining communities together and joining people together that are now household names. For mm. instance, Uber yeah. was developed after the last recession. You know, WeWork started to happen about, you know, communities joining together in, in offices. You know, um, I, I even think, I, I, if I'm wrong, please say, I think even things like Netflix were developed after the last recession where people wanted to go in and, and have these portals and stuff. So we might find that the next billionaire in the world hasn't even been, you know, uh, born, not even born yet, but the next billionaire company hasn't even been thought of yet because, mm. you know, the pandemic will absolutely drive us towards home working more. You know, it's going to drive us towards um, lots of different ways of working and different practices, which we, we, we don't even understand yet. You know, they haven't even in, 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 uh, been really showcased. So for me, I would look at it and go, I'm going to be fascinated to see what comes from it. But Morton, you bring up a really, really good point. You know, will this now drive us into recession? The US this week has now announced that 40.8 million people are now technically unemployed in America. You know, they then it's have a devastating to listen to. Yeah, yeah. it is yeah, devastating. Yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah. It's huge. Yeah. I think I, I think to 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 I mean, I think that that also in that perspective, you have to think of it like there's like short term effects of things like like for example the unemployment i think that if we compare the u.s unemployment compared to european uh, unemployment i think that the measures are a little bit different because i think that uh, uh, the labor protection is maybe a little bit different here compared yeah. to there right yes. so 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 maybe Stronger maybe country. may and also because of the the social security i think that people might go faster back to work uh, in the u.s rather than in in europe so 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 i think that that all numbers should be taken with that in mind that that you can't compare directly to things uh, i think that one of the things that is in in my opinion a really uh, intriguing way of looking into the uh, what will happen after the after the pandemic is uh, one thing is the innovation that we're talking about but i think that also the way that equipment is financed the way that we see uh, uh, business cultures emerge around the financial of how to operate a business will will change a, a lot. Um, I know that I have been been <laughs> been told that I've been blaming Heidelberg for 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 their strategy on on subscription, but I think that the basic idea of subscription is not a bad idea. It's more how you implement it. It's more how you see it, and I, I think that. Uh, one of the things that uh, I think it was uh, Anthony Thurlby that said that in, in the interview I did with him, that uh, one thing that is really, really important in the future is how you partner with your vendors, because you become way more dependent on each other in order to be successful. And I think that will be something that will really also drive how businesses have to work with each other, not just from a vendor to a printer and from a printer to a uh, uh, to uh, a customer, but also how we interact with each other in relation to 
uh, exhibitors or, exhi or organizations yeah, yeah. like exhibitors yeah. and also the media it will play a completely different role after this. Yeah, clearly, Morton, that point is really valid. Mm. Is the manufacturers, any manufacturers out there are going to have to rethink uh, a little bit about their their approach because as we've said all along is it's unlikely there will be big investments in machinery, highly unlikely that the big machines will be invested in and therefore they may have to reflect that in terms of the way they approach the business model and as you said Steve you know it may be smaller more agile bits of kit uh, as Morton's identifying it may be approached in terms of financing so you're yeah, absolutely all those things you say are really valid listen guys we've just got five minutes so I just want to pick up on a couple of other things uh, Morton you will be able to share your thank the printer movie uh, link at the end but before I've already that, done that in the chat okay, so okay great I'm, I'm okay, ahead of you for, for once fantastic <laughs> um what I was just going to ask the poll that's been run as we've gone through asks a little bit about um events and uh, you know we've all talked about business travel we've talked about the fact that we we're not sure whether we will do face to face in the way we have been in the past and that's going to be a challenge what's your view uh, in terms of when things will get going, do you, for example, do we think do we think Drupal will take place? Steve, what are you asking? No, Steve, well, okay. both of you, both of you, either of you, <laughs> do either of you think it will take place? Steve, well, right, okay, sorry, Morton. Um, what's the first of all key thing? What's the date for Drupal? Oh, it's April. So no, uh, April next year. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, there, there's, I, I would say, I would hope. By the time we get to April next year, we're in a point where we're, we're in a society where we can freely move around and hopefully there's a vaccine uh, in, 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 you know, in the world which can deal with it. Um, I, I would hope, I'm an, I'm, I'm a, an optimist, you know me Fraser, yeah, for many yeah. years, I am an optimist. I'm, I would look at it and go, I really half, hope it is. Half full. Yeah, I would, half look, full. I, I would absolutely hope yes. Yeah, um, Morton? Um, I don't think there will be a drooper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, nice balance, then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I tell you why. It's just. Go on, tell us why. Sorry. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's not because I don't hope for a trooper, no. um, but uh, you see, Bob's cancelled, Xerox cancelled. Uh, I know other vendors are considering to cancel, and and the big question you have to think about when you when you when you look into the Drupal organization and how it works. Isn't that kind of old school? I mean, isn't yeah. it kind of old school to go and see uh, tons of halls filled with equipment? And, 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 and besides being maybe old school, is that if you look from a vendor perspective, you look at Canon, if you look at Rico, if you look at uh, almost every vendor, they have their own private shows. Why do they have that? Because they have more time with the customers and they get to invite the ones that are really valuable to them. Yeah. So why should, why should you have a, a trade show for all the people yeah. that that don't have, can't afford to have their own shows, right? Yeah, and I think that that's is really like, cool. That yeah. is one thing. And then the second thing, which is maybe more important, is that everybody has developed products to show as we speak. They have not invented new things to show something. So why should people go there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's very valid. The other thing that perhaps we haven't mentioned, but it's worth reminding ourselves is, look at us, we're kind of, you know, slightly the older white men you know it's kind of a, the, the industry is a little bit like that isn't it and we we hope that the industry will be developed into something that's appealing to younger people to to people from different generations and well and, if, if uh, that is if that is the case then and you know obviously we all want to be super you know you know we will move on and 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 the, the, the yeah, younger exactly. generation will take over and like morton said you know they live their lives so much online and in a virtual world i totally agree with you will will in the future it just be a virtual trade show yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and you know there are some incredible now technologies around you know augmented reality and stuff like that you know the first person who can crack virtual trade shows yeah and if they can come up with a format where people will will go do you know what that was a good experience because that's yeah. the big thing is if you take away that experience of seeing that printer seeing what it can do understanding the technology and how it's going to link with you and how you can then take that to your clients if someone can crack that i think then i think then the, the traveling to a trade show will be broken and maybe yeah. like i said with uber or netflix or or we work maybe that person is just that 18 year old in his bedroom at the moment is thinking to himself, yeah, okay, I can crack that. It's only a piece of technology and I'll do it. 
I'm sure there are virtual events out there in the world. Yeah, it's it's possibly more, as you said, it's more about flipping the model, isn't it? You know, I'm I'm not yeah. convinced that virtual exhibitions will ever work. I'm really no, not. I, I, I don't believe I, that either. I don't. I think what what Morton does, what we're doing today, works at a certain level, doesn't it? It won't work at that yeah. kind of direct communication. But a combination of some of these things, as you've mentioned earlier, I think, you know, these open open days, open houses, you know, yeah. if you are Rico and you bring a whole load of guys into your uh, Telford operation there and you want to show them, you, if it's 50 people that you've selected and they're of a very high standard, you can keep it very kind of, you know, they don't have to connect too much. They're not mixing with 2,000 people. They're not having to go on different stands. There might just be a different model, might And, and, and I'm phrase. And Fraser, just sorry, think, sorry. just think about it because um, it it has a lot of, of uh, other things to it as well. Because if you have a, a, a kind of an event where you need where you can take people into a room and you can and you can spend time with them in a, in a totally different way, uh, it's not just about owning them. It's also a matter of actually giving people. Because you mentioned yourself just a moment ago that maybe the pandemic also requires us to have a higher level of understanding and knowledge and you don't get that on a trade show where you no, spend like no. three minutes talking to somebody who doesn't really have time yeah. to talk to you anyway yeah yeah i think it's absolutely everyone's mentioned it it's the value of of the you know kind of continuing to learn continue to think differently and i mean that's the theme of this particular event and and listen guys we've just come to the end of the, of the time i'd like to just wrap it up and say thank you to both of you for giving us a little bit of extra uh, your time um we'll share again the uh thank you printer movie we'll share that again through the website and steve just want to say thank you very much to you a very popular session this morning lots of great information uh so thanks very much to both of you